So we are in Naturalis, the Natural History Museum of the Netherlands, and it's amazing to see how different males and females of animals can sometimes be. Look at this red deer, for instance. It's large, has large antlers. This is the male, and this is the female. It's much smaller and no antlers at all. And it can get really extreme. Look at this extinct Irish elk, for instance. Why is that? That's what I'm going to ask Michelle Spierings. She's a PhD student at Leiden University and studies behavioral biology. So Michelle, also in these birds, the differences between the males and the females are amazing. I see a very conspicuous crest and very inconspicuously colored females, brownish and greenish. And look at this pheasant with a very brightly colored white and black head and a very long tail and the female is just brownish and well camouflaged. I mean in the previous video lecture Manuel explained us that the best camouflaged snails that they are the fittest. Yes you're right and I do believe that these long tails and bright colors are very impractical for these animals. There's even a bird species, the long-tailed widow bird, that has such a long tail it can't even fly anymore. Then why do the males have that? Well, it's due to something that we call sexual selection. It's when the females have a preference to mate with the males with these conspicuous traits. But why? Well, it's, uh, for one reason we think it's the quality of the males is represented in these features. If they can survive, even though they're so conspicuous, it must mean that they're, they're of high quality. Ah, and that's also the case with, uh, with the red deer, right? That the female chooses just the red deers with the uh, biggest antlers. Yes, that could be the case, but it could also be something else going on. Actually, there are two types of sexual selection. You have intersexual selection, where the females have a preference for the males with conspicuous traits. But in the case of the antlers, the males use them to fight amongst each other. This is something we call intrasexual selection. It's not always possible to separate the two, as the female chooses to mate with the male that wins the fight. And there's another example of uh, giraffes. They use their long necks to bang their heads together in fights. So these long necks might not be an adaptation for the tall trees, but might actually be due to intrasexual selection. And why is that actually? I mean, why do the, the males fight with each other and why do the females choose? You have to think about the investment uh, and the time it takes to raise your offspring. So for females, the number of offspring that they can get is limited to the time and energy they have. The time they can be pregnant in their lives or the time they need to spend breastfeeding. For males, this is different. For them, the limitation to the number of offspring is limited to the number of females that want to mate with them. So the males, they want to get the most females. And the females, they want to get the best male. So the males are competitive and the females are choosy. And is it always like that? No, not at all. There's also cases in which the males are the choosy ones. For example, these pipefish, in which the males are taking care of the broods. The female, she lays her eggs in the brood pouch of the male. He guards them and he protects them, he raises them. And so he's the choosy one and the females are the competitive ones. And it can get even more extreme. For instance, in widow spiders, for the males it's a huge investment because they can get eaten when they mate with a female. So they really want to mate with the biggest females, with the largest eggs, so they might be the least hungry ones. And what you see is that the female of the widow spider, she's very big and she's brightly colored and very, very conspicuous. But the males, they are small, they're brown, you hardly notice them. Wow. I hardly can see it. Exactly. So it's just like the pheasants, but then the other way around. So things can get, uh, also can get completely the other way around. That's really amazing. Exactly. And what else is interesting is what you see when both parents invest in the brood. So at Leiden University, we study zebra finches. And these small songbirds, both the males and the females, take care of the nest. And what you see is that they are both choosy. The females want to have the best male, but the males also want to have the best female. What happens is what we call assortative mating, where a pair is of more or less equal quality form. So, although things can now and then be pretty complicated, it seems that sexual selection can really be a very powerful mechanism to generate all that fantastic traits like a very long tail. Exactly. 